You know, if you're a young parent or a person that uh, loves your grandkids and loves all things uh, relating to children, this is a movie you should not watch. I uh, put a heavy disclaimer. Uh, when I first saw it, it was one of the roughest views of my life. I think it was seven or eight years old when I saw it. But boys, when M uh, came into my universe, and this was something like, I don't know, uh, some 40 years after his first release, uh, I didn't know how chilling it would be when I saw it. I think it was late night uh, CBC or CTV. It's probably one of the, 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 the toughest movies uh, you can get through. And if you can get through it, my God, you have my, you have my respect. Now, M is a 1931 German mystery thriller film directed by the incomparable Fritz Lang and starring the incomparable Peter Lorre in his third screen role as Hans Beckert, a serial killer who targets children. Both Lang's first sound film, an early example of procedural drama, a precursor to film noir, M centers on a manhunt for Beckert, conducted by both the police and organized crime. The film screenplay was written by Lang and his wife, Thea Van Horbo. It features many cinematic innovations, including the use of long tracking shots and a musical litmotif in the form of In the Hall of the Mountain King, which is repeatedly whistled by Laurie's character. Lang regarded the film as his magnum opus and is widely considered one of the greatest films of all time, I would give a top 20, and an indispensable influence on modern crime and thriller fiction. Uh, American remake under the same title, directed by Joseph Losey, was released in 1951. Now produced by Seymour Nebenzal, written by Fritz and his wife Thea, directed by Fritz, the cinematography by Fritz Arno Wagner, edited by Paul Falkenberg, who should have got an Oscar nomination for this, but there was no, I don't think editing was in the Oscars uh, uh, termination, termination. Nero Film AG, distributed by Vern Geit Star, Star Film Gimbuf. Release date was May 11, 1931, 111 minutes, and uh, uh, it's uh, German w and with uh, English and other language subtitles. In Berlin, a group of children are playing an elimination game in the courtyard of an apartment building using a macabre chant about a child murderer. Frau Beckmann sets the table for lunch, waiting for her daughter to come home from school. A wanted por poster warns of a serial killer preying on children as anxious parents wait outside the school. Now, Elsie Beckman leaves school, bouncing a ball on her way home. She is approached by Hans Beckard, and the famous scene where his shadow goes over the, the wanted poster and basically says to her, uh, what a nice ball you have. Now, in this, he's whistling in the Hall of the Mountain King by Edvard Gregg. He offers to buy her balloon from a blind street vendor and walks and talks with her. Elsie's place at the table remains empty, and her ball is eventually seen rolling away through a patch of grass, and her balloon is caught in the telephone lines overhead in a very effective scene. Now, in the wake of her disappearance, anxiety runs high among the public. Beckard sends an anonymous letter to the newspapers taking credit for the child murders and promising that he will commit others. The police extract clues from the letter using new techniques of fingerprinting and handwriting analysis. Under mounting pressure from the government, the police work around the clock. Inspector Carl Lohmann, head of the uh, homicide uh, squad, instructs his men to intensify their search and to check the records of recently released psychiatric patients, focusing on any with a history of violence against children. They stage frequent raids and seizure parts of the city to question known criminals, disrupting organized crime so badly that the uh, Dear Schnanker character, the safecracker, summons the bosses of Berlin's Ringerveen to a conference to address the situation to basically help the cops catch this guy because there's so much pressure on the non-killers. They decide to organize their own manhunt, using beggars to watch the children. The police search Beckard's rented room, find evidence that he wrote the letter there, and lie in wait to arrest him. Now, Beckard sees a young girl in the reflection of a shop window and begins to follow her, but stops when the girl meets her mother. He encounters another girl and befriends her, but the blind balloon vendor recognizes his wrestling, and that's the trigger for the plot as it goes along. The vendor tells one of his friends, who follows Beckard and sees him inside the shop with the girl. As the two exit onto the street, the man writes a letter M for a murder, murder on, on his palm in chalk, pretends to trip and bumps into Beckard, marking the back of his overcoat with the letter. And again, one of the most effective non-Hitchcock thriller scenes of all time. The girl notices the chalk and offers to clean it for him, but before she finishes, Beckard realizes he's being watched and flees the scene without her. 
attempting to uh, evade the, the beggars. Beckard hides inside of a large office building just before the workers leave for the evening. The beggars call to save Cracker, who arrives at the building with a team of other criminals. They capture and torture one of the watchmen for information, and after capturing the other two, search the building and catch Beckard in the attic. When one of the watchmen trips to the silent alarm, the criminals narrowly escape with the prisoner before the police arrive. Franz, one of the criminals, is left behind in confusion and captured by police. By falsely claiming that one of the watchmen was killed during the break-in, Lohman tricks Franz in admitting that the gang's only motive was to find Becker. Now the criminals take Becker to an abandoned distillery to face a kangaroo court. He finds a large silent crowd awaiting him. Becker is given a lawyer who gamely argues in his defense, but fails to win any sympathy from the improvised jury. Becker delivers an impassioned monologue, saying that he cannot control his uh, homicidal urges while the other criminals present present break the law by choice. He questions why they believe they have any right to judge him. So what a right to have you to speak, criminals. Perhaps you are ever proud of yourself, proud of being able to crack into safes or climb into buildings or cheat at cards, all of which it seems to me you should could just as easily give up. If you had learned something useful or if you had jobs or if you were not such lazy pigs, I cannot help myself. I have no control over this evil thing that is inside me, the fire, the voices, the torment. Now, he explains kind of the psychological aspect of true mental illness in that scene. And Peter Lorre was a very quiet and uh, dedicated actor. But to see such a, a beloved later actor who was big in the, uh, what he called the Bogart and the other uh, film noir and also with the Roger Corman movies, to see him here, it's, it's, you have to pity the person because he, he can't help himself. But this kind of is considered a dangerous category because to some, some people it's a training ground for how to be the best pedophile possible or uh, abuser. So in certain jurisdictions in the world, it has been banned through the years. Now in the movie, as it continues, Becker pleads to be handed over to police. His lawyer points out that uh, Safe Cracker, presiding over proceedings, is wanted on three counts of manslaughter, and that is unjust to execute an insane man. Just about as the mob is about to kill Becker, the police arrive to arrest both him and the criminals. As a panel of judges prefers to deliver their verdict at Becker's trial, the mothers of the tree of his victims weep in the gallery. Frau Beckman says that no sentence will bring the dead children back, and uh, one has to keep closer watch over the children. The screen fades to black as she adds, all of you. So it's it's a it's kind of a, a you know a, a Shakespearean style, style play. If you don't protect your children, the people that cannot protect your children, the people who are going to abuse them could do it. I had a close friend recently, I just he was just caught for child pornography. I never thought he would do that, but it harkens back. You never know what's in a person's mind until he does something bad. And I've never committed a crime in my life besides uh, speeding, but my thoughts are clean. But the people that commit these crimes, like the character in them, their thoughts are not clean. And just like Judas, are they, are they uh, motivated by the devil? Are they motivated by upbringing? Is it a chemical imbalance? But this is pretty, like I said, it's a rough go. Now, this was his first starring role, Peter Lorre, and boosted his career, though he was typecast as a villain for years afterwards in films such as Mad Love and Crime and Punishment. Before uh, M, Lorre had been mostly a comedic, a comedic actor. After fleeing the Nazis, he landed a role in Alfred Hitchcock's The Man Who Knew Too Much, picking up English along the way. So he acted in English who was a third language, ladies and gentlemen. Now, another uh, strong performance in movies by Gustav Grundens as a safe cracker. Grungens received acclaim for his role and established a successful career for himself during the Nazi era, era ultimately become director of the National Dramatic uh, Theater. Now, Lang had placed an advertising newspaper in 1930 stating his next film would be uh, called The Murderer Among Us, and it was about a child murderer. He immediately began receiving threatening letters in the mail and was also denied a studio space to shoot the film at Stockholm Studios. When Lang confronted the head of the studio to find out why he was being denied access, the studio head informed Lang he was a member of the Nazi party and that the party suspected that the film was meant to depict the Nazis. This assumption was based entirely on the film's original title and a Nazi party relented when he told them the plot. Now, M uh, was uh, eventually shot in six weeks at the Stocken uh, Zeppenhill studio just outside Berlin. He made the film for Nero Film rather than with UFA, or his own production company. It was produced by Nero studio head Seymour Nebenzal, who later produced Lang's The Testament of Dr. Mavos. Working titles for the film including 
a city search for a murderer, and the, your murderer looks at you. I can't say the German uh, pronunciation. Now we're searching the film. He spent eight days inside a mental institution in Germany and met several child murderers, including the legendary Peter Quartet. He used several real-life criminals as extras in the film, and eventually 25 cast members were arrested during the film shooting. Laurie was cast, Laurie, uh, Laurie, uh, Peter Laurie was cast in the lead role of Hans Beckert, acting for the film during the day and appearing at stage at night in Valentin Katyev's Squaring the Circle. Now, Lang did not show any acts of violence or deaths of children on screen, and later said that only suggesting violence, he forced each individual member of the audience to create the gruesome details of the murder in their head. M has been said by various critics and reviewers to be based on serial killer uh, Kurt Curtin, the vampire Dusseldorf, whose crimes took place in the 1920s. Lang denied that he drew from this case an interview in 63 with film historian Jero Gondert. At the time, I decided to use the subject matter of M. There were many serial killers terrorizing Germany. Uh, and the inspector in the movie is based on Ernst Gennat, director of the Berlin uh, Crime Force. Now, uh, Lang's depiction of the Berlin underwall in the film was inspired by the real Berlin underworld. The film's portrayal of the big gangs are organized with a board of directors that were dominated by a charismatic master criminal, which was based on reality. Now, uh, the, uh, uh, the use of sound was very strong here. Uh, one of the early examples of the strong use of, si- of sound, it could have been silent, and Lang experimented to new technology. It has a dense and complex soundtrack as opposed to more theatrical talkies being released at the time. Now, it premiered uh, in uh, 11 May 31 at the U- Ufa Palace am Zoo in Berlin in a version lasting 117 minutes. The original negative was preserved at the Federal Film Archive in a 96-minute version. In 1960, an edited 98-minute version was released. The film was eventually restored at the, by the Netherlands Film Museum in 2000. Now, a complete print has been released on Criterion over the years, which was also shown in the Hollywood Suite. Now, released in April 1933 by Formico Pictures, after playing in German with English subtitles for two weeks, it was pulled for theaters and replaced by an English-language version. The redubbing was directed by Eric Hakim, and Laurie was one of the few cast members to reprise his role. As with many other early talkies from the years 3031, it was partially reshot with actors, including Laurie, performing dialogue in other languages for foreign markets after the German original was completed. Now, <laughs> Variety had the weirdest review. He called the film a little too long. Without spoiling the fact, even better ink cutting could be done. There are a few repetitions and a few slow scenes. Now, uh, Graham Greene gave a positive review, saying looking through the eyepiece of a microscope was a sensitive movie, through which the tangled mind is exposed. Laid flat on the side, love and lust, and a building perversity, hatred of self and despair jumping at you from the jelly. In later years, the film received widespread critical praise and holds an approval rating of 100% of Rotten Tomatoes based on 65 reviews with an average 9.3 rating. This is a 10 out of 10 movie. There's no other way to talk it. Now, the site's consensus was that it's a landmark psychological thriller with arresting images, deep thoughts on modern society, and Peter Lorre in his finest uh, performance. Now, Lang has considered M to be his uh, favorite of his own films because of the social criticism of the film. In 37, he told a reporter they made the film to warn mothers about neglecting children. The film has appeared on multiple lists as one of the greatest films ever made. It was also voted the best German film of all time in 1994. It's also included Empire's 100 Best Films of World Cinema in 2010. Now, uh, the film is, uh, is also referenced in a Randy Newman song uh, uh, in Germany for the war by American songwriter Randy Newman. Now, a scene from the movie was used in the 40 uh, Nazi propaganda movie, The Eternal Jew. Now, the Hollywood remake of M, uh, you know, uh, I, don't think, uh, why, I don't know why it was redone. It was a uh, move from Berlin to L.A. Now, uh, the Nero films they produced it for Columbia, and uh, the the uh, David Wayne had Laurie's role, which was miscasting. Now, it has also been adapted for radio on BBC The Radio Tree, and has also been a comic book series as well. Now, a six-episode Austrian-German miniseries adaptation of the film was released entitled M, A City Hunts, A Murderer. So, ladies and gentlemen, everything involving thrillers and film noir has a basis in fact, and here we have Peter Laurie 
basically doing something he's out of control, and the children are the victims. Ladies and gentlemen, all I'd like to say, this is one of the hardest watches I've ever done. And if you're strong enough to watch the movie, I cannot say recommend it, but if you can get through it, you're forever changed by the movie. The reason why I've been an advocate for people to hold their children close is because of this movie. This learned me at an early age that you, the only person can trust yourself and always be wary of people who are looking to hurt you. That's not paranoia. That's what the world is like. So keep your friends close, but keep your enemies far away. There are people out there that uh, are motivated to kill children because they were molested or, or uh, abandoned or beaten when they were younger and are taking it out on young people like to, to take back the energy. I went to school with 15 child molesters in my years at DRHS and Jack River School, uh, and the majority were convicted, and each one of them were mentally ill. So that shows you a person that, that touches or hurts a child is mentally ill. There's no other way to say it. Uh, are, they, are they competent? No. But like I said, if something snapped, like being molested, it's a, it's a, it's a, when the molester molests, it's because they molested themselves. And you have compassion, but like I said, be, be wary. I always wonder about Halloween too, but like I said, we have, it's a way in Canada that uh, to celebrate the creepy and the crawly. At least in Canada, we watch our children much more than we did in the 50s, 60s, where the priests were molesting uh, people left and right in the Maritimes and throughout Canada on the behest of the Catholic Church. So that's my take on M, one of the greatest movies of all time, with Peter Lorre's performance, one of the greatest of all time. And like I said, if you haven't seen the movie before, be warned. I'd much rather you read about it first than watch it, because watching it could be really, really hard. Have a good one. Bye.